All right, so those of you who are listening to this recording, don't go back over all the YouTube videos, forget it, it's over. If you haven't done it, that's three hours completely wasted. So I'm going to do it step-by-step. Step. I'm gonna to explain to you exactly what I want you to do. And you should be able to get entirely caught up very quickly. And I don't want anybody behind and I wanna be reading those posts and that's it, okay? So we're gonna start out with the discussion of suffering, okay? Because I know a lot of you are struggling as a matter of fact, let's just sit back and think about this for a minute. I think AUW probably qualifies as one of the top 10 colleges in the world whose students would suffer the most from COVID, okay? You have students, without a lot of wealth at the beginning, right? So they, students who live in areas where the electricity goes down, students who live in neighborhoods that are hostile to them for being college students, you know, and then they come from 18 countries. And I mean, if you look at everything about AUW, if you wanted to design a school that would the students would go nuts if something like this happened, it would be this school. <laughs> so when you you know when it's obvious that many of you are under stress, keep that in mind. Like AUW is the number one would cause the student stress school in the world, as far as I'm concerned. So keep that in mind, it's not normal. This is not normal and you're gonna get over it, okay? So what I'm gonna do for the first hour maybe, we're gonna go through that whole, I went through that whole chart about suffering, right? Cause you on average are suffering more than any students at any other school. So let, let me let you know, I feel your pain or I understand your pain, okay? I'm not at all discrediting your suffering. I'm just not going to let you not do the class, right? You have to show me you read, read something and thought about something for every single class because I'm a teacher and I have respect for myself as a teacher. And AUW is a good school. And if if the teachers collectively allow the academic standards to collapse because they feel sorry for the students, the reputation of the school will collapse. Um, I did go to my supervisor. I've explained to her exactly what I'm doing. She says, what you're doing is exactly right. It's not the only way to get it right, but everything you do is fine. Okay, so she has to keep the standards decent I keep the standards decent. That doesn't mean at all that I don't know your suffering, I do. So just remember that AUW is number one in the world for unjust suffering of students. Okay, let's everybody have a pity party for just a minute, right? Let's applaud and say, yes, we feel sorry for ourselves and we deserve to feel sorry for ourselves, okay? I, <laughs> I get it. All right, I get it. It, it. You didn't cause it, you did everything to prevent it and you got it anyway, you know? So if, if you can learn how to be resilient, you can, you know, if any other college student tells you, oh, COVID, you go, ha, no way, Jose. Let me tell you my story, you know? So as long as you know that, you're right up there for top stressor, stressed out, I know that and we got to maintain the standards of the school and also get you through this, okay? All right, so here it is. I'm going to give you time. You get out a piece of paper and a pencil, right? Write this stuff down. Don't hesitate. Don't wait till after class. No, 
because then you're going to end up going having to go over the material again. Do not do this. It's a one shot deal. Okay. All right. When the class is over, as soon as possible, and I'm going to try to end the class 20 to 30 minutes earlier so you can do it immediately. Right? I know you have that half hour to do it. No excuses. Just do it right then. And then you're done. Okay? So you do have to do a reflection after the class is over. Okay? And I will try to give you that time off. I don't know if I can do it today because we're making up so much stuff. But from now on, I'll give you that last half hour. Just do it. Get it over with. Get it post. Um, and I will start docking you after a week because if you don't get it in in a week, it's going to take you eight hours. So I guess I will just make you get it in in a week for your sake or else you're going to have way more stress. Okay. Now. While we're going through this sheet on suffering, so we're going to go through all these kinds of suffering. Either you have three choices. You either post it for the day that we did unjust suffering, which was way back. So those are the those of you who are behind. You can catch up on that first day, or you can do it as a substitute for some other day, right? I don't care. We did Augustine, you're going to do unjust suffering. Fine. Just get it over with. Get it out there. Or <coughs> it's basically the outline for your paper, right? Decide your first paper is going to be on suffering. Take all these notes, write a paper, get it over with. Okay? Right now. So do not, 24 hours from now, you must have done something, right? Gotten a post done, gotten a paper done, gotten a paper outline done, something. Okay, if you want to write on a different topic, right? Because I started out saying you can write on anything you want, just come and meet me. Well, that's a freak out, it didn't work. So I'm going to speak to you as if do this, do that, do that. Yes, professor. Yes, professor. Fine. If that's what motivates you, fine. If you'd say, what I wanted to write on Augustine, fine. <laughs> fine. You know, like I didn't want to be this way in the first place, but okay, of course. Um, so what you want to envision, you are writing a book to yourself about what you think a healthy psyche is, right? You are writing a book. All right. For example, your thesis might be, and again, if you need me to tell you this is what your thesis is, no question. All right. Let, let it be, but I don't like to tell people their frame of mind, right? They know it better than I do, but okay. COVID-19 has led me psychologically into a constant feeling of panic. This paper explains what I am panicked about, what Seneca would say about my situation, and what I plan to do moving forward. I know COVID-19 will end. I do not want to have set myself back during this time. I want to have the same academic record I would have had without COVID so I can move forward at the same level I would have been without COVID. I want to use COVID as a way to make me stronger and more resilient so I know I can face the many obstacles I will have in the future. Right. If you want that for your thesis, fine. If you don't, fine. <laughs> but that's an example. Now, get out your pencil, or right? The physical problems, all right. Have you had COVID? Has your family had COVID, right? Have friends or relatives you know had COVID? Have they died of COVID, right? Get all that down, okay? Was the reason 
you got COVID or your family got COVID, was it because you took unnecessary risks? Was it partly your fault? Right? This is what you have to go through. Or was it because your political leaders were irresponsible? Or was it because the people in your society, right? Your neighbors were irresponsible. I know some students in Vietnam or something, there was a big wedding and everybody got to the wedding and it turned out to be a super spreader, right? So, and that was in her town, that was some of her relatives, right? So write all that down. What, what am I suffering from here? Did I do anything to cause it? Is really the reason just because I'm from a poor country and that dang professor Beck doesn't understand it because she's from a rich country. <laughs> I, I, I have, I, you know, I feel for you, right? It just isn't, doesn't help you for me to say, that's okay, you can feel sorry for yourself, right? You need to sort it out, right? Did I do anything to bring this on? Or was it basically just because I was born into this country or I was born into this village or whatever? Because if that's true, you can't control, change that right away, right? You might eventually go to school, you know, you're going to school somewhere else. You'd be away from there for a while. You might wanna go back, but as a trained professional trying to solve the problems, right? So, you should never, you know, go back to your village without going back with a degree and some expertise and some way to help. But you did not control where you were born, right? Uh, so sort that out. What is it about the physical side that I can control or that I can't control? Okay, then there's the next point. The fact that all human beings around the world are interconnected, right? Our actions make a difference to the suffering of others in our nations and everywhere. If we want to avoid unnecessary suffering, we have to learn from COVID that our personal choices are not only personal, they're social, political, and universal. So I want you to write down, has that thought occurred to you? Did that, was that something you already knew before COVID or yet you, had, you hadn't thought about it? You thought of yourself as this individual doing her own thing, you know? I have rights and I'm a woman with rights and I wanna fulfill, you know, I have a right to an education, whatever. Did COVID make you more aware of how interconnected we are and how do you want to incorporate that into your view of life going forward? Okay, I'm going to give you some time to write now because I you got to write this and hand it in. Professor. Yep. Can you repeat the last part? You mentioned about uh, it um, make you aware or what I well, it says it here, right? It's made me aware that we're interconnected. Right? The fact that all human beings are interconnected, right? Does that make sense, Isabel? Yes, yes, Professor. It's just, I mean, I did. Okay, so you write, I became more aware of this because before this, I thought this way and now I think differently. Or I always thought this, but I knew the people around me didn't realize this. That's where I can't type up everything, right? Because after this general perception, everybody has their own story. <laughs> okay, so let me just stop. Go ahead. Write the physical thing and the second thing, and I'll give you some more time here. So, 
So, Professor, we are supposed to choose any physical suffering rate of our own choice. Well, it's COVID. It's related to COVID. Well, you can if, okay, this is the one if your thesis is about COVID. If you want to write a paper about some other kind, fine. It's just that as soon as I start saying that, students, oh, I don't know what I'm, you know, so I'm just giving you one example. But you can always do your own example, okay? Okay. Right? You can always do your own example. I'm just, I cannot figure out how to say something to students that will motivate them and not scare them, right? Do you understand me? Wish I can't figure out what how to how to punch the button and not the bad button. <laughs> it's it's actually our fault, not yours. No, may wish I don't. I would never say that because I do think you know AUW is in the top ten of kids under stress. I just keep remembering that, and I. Anyway. <laughs> This is the last time, right? I'm not going to go over stuff again. This is it. This is your last chance. Um, okay. The third one. Did, did this thought cross your mind, right? Is this a button you want to write about or not? <laughs> we cannot blame God or fate or some other cause outside of human choice. Apart from how the virus started, the effects of it are the result of how human beings choose to respond to it. Have you been thinking about this, right? Because there are people who will say God, and then they won't do anything about it, right? Or they'll say fate. Or in our country, they'll say it's the Chinese fault, right? And it, you know, it's not true. It doesn't matter how it started. It matters that we didn't do anything about it. We would be in a much better place. So has the experience with COVID helped you think more clearly about human choice, the power of human choice to make a difference in how human history, what happens, right? How we create our history. So for example, in the US, we could have had way fewer deaths. We just chose to be ignorant. We chose pride and greed and ignorance. Those are choices, but I don't think that's true of you in your countries or your situations, but I'm going to give you a few minutes about thinking about what you've learned about blaming God or fate versus the power of human choice in relation to COVID. Okay. If you want to put in the chat when you're done, then when maybe half the students are done, I'll just move on. I don't just not, but please be honest because I don't want to sit here all night. Let's see. Okay. Of course, I, I don't know where the chat is. Oh, there it is. Okay.
Okay, now I'm going to ask you, are you still writing? Please put in the chat, yes, if you are. Because if you don't tell me you're finished and I don't get some posts in two days, right. Okay. Then, you know, that, that's just not fair. That's where I draw the line, right? Okay, so yes means I forgot. Okay, someone, yeah, it's better to say done. Say done if you're done. I shouldn't have asked the yes, I forgot what I asked. <laughs> so, um, okay, so I think people are done enough. I'm gonna move on. But remember, you know, you need to let me know right away because I expect results from this. Okay. Fourth, I know the country I live in, my location, my neighborhood affects my personal experience, but I didn't control that, right? I just have to accept the fact I grew up here and do what I have to do to minimize. We can make choices that make the situation better. So in this one, just be specific. I grew up here, here, um, I had this disadvantage, I had this advantage. You know, what did I do to minimize the suffering, right? So I'll give you a, a few minutes on that one. Professor, what if we are here in campus? Oh, well, you can say compared to the other sisters, I have an advantage, right? I was able to stay on campus. And then you can say, you know, what are the advantage and disadvantage of being where you are? Especially compared to where you would have been. Okay, so the next one is very similar. So I am not going to grade you on whether you responded to every single sentence, right? I am not going to go back to my sentences and see. Okay, so the next one is very similar. So if you want to add something else, um, I would say I'm too harsh to say lies. They're just half truths, right? Okay, put done when you're done. Okay. Um, Okay, um, one, two, three, four. I think I've got about five done.
who just done Sabekun? Okay. All right. So the last one that said done is Puja. <laughs> so now I have to remember, you know, where I am on the list. Okay. Next. Do I always ask myself, what can I do? What can I do to minimize the suffering? Have I made mistakes when I'm trying to answer that question? Have I thought I could do something? It turned out I couldn't. Have I thought I could not do something when I really could? Have I deluded myself about how much I can control? Am I allowing self-pity to ignore or deny what I can control? I hope that you realize I've been asking myself this question about why students aren't handing in posts, right? Is there something I did, right? Have I made mistakes when I, you know, and I keep asking myself that and I keep thinking, well, how can I correct that? So. If you could realize that at least I'm trying to do that. And I will, you can trust me that I am not going to ever, even in my mind or my heart, think that it's laziness on the part of a student. Okay. Lazy might just mean totally exhausted because of all the complications, but I am going to assume there is not one self-indulgent, corrupt, lazy student at AUW. That's my assumption. So if there's a problem, I always, what can I do, right? Is there something I did? Now, if, if the only problem is, I had one student say, well, we have teachers that don't really care if you read it. Okay, I'm not doing that, okay? You must read and write on every day. That's where I'm drawing the line. But given that I, that's where I draw the line. How can I minimize the suffering I'm imposing on students for trying, forcing them, right, to give me feedback on every class, right? Have I made mistakes? So I want you to think about COVID or school or whatever you want to think about. What do I want? I think you want a degree from a good school. Does that cause suffering? Yes. How can I minimize the suffering from COVID or from the situation, right? So I'll give you some time. Sometimes some students think they can do it and they really can't, right? And they have to be self-knowledge. Um, it's more likely that you think you can't or that you think somebody else is to blame. Maybe they are, but if you can't control it, you have to find some way you can control something and move forward. So I'll give you, you know, a minute on that one. And I think Pooja was the last one who said she was done. So I'll try to see how many duns there are after Pooja's name and then I'll know when I can move on. Um, okay. So they come. Okay. Okay, Sabekun is done, Maywish is done. So those of you who are listening to the YouTube video, Absolutely, sit and do this, right? Exactly the same. Do not, you know, listen to three hours and then try to do the assignment. Just go through it right with me. Um, okay, Sabe Kun may wish Aisha Supti Puja. That's five. I don't know how many other people 
Masoma and Isabel, seven. Okay, Falak, eight. Now, nine. Saida, 10. Okay, good. 11. Rita, 12. Let me make sure I've got how many people are actually in the class. Well, 12 is plenty. Um, okay, so let's move to the next one, which is important. Has COVID strengthened my relationships or weakened them, right? COVID is a big game changer in terms of relationships. My son runs an inner city charter school and COVID has really tested everybody's character. And he said there's some people are having really immature reactions and they're blaming him and he's explaining to them. And he said, well, well, mom, it, it just tells you a lot about some people that you didn't know, you know? So has COVID strengthened my relationships? And then if you think about it, can you be proactive about that? Can you, can you use it as an opportunity to strengthen your relationships? Um, for example, with AUW sisters, I'm just going to call them, I think of it as a sisterhood. I'm sorry, that's, I guess that makes me a 60s feminist or something, but I think you should think of it that way, right? Well, have some of the sisters at AUW come out, you know, as strong characters and they're sort of models for others? Or have they revealed themselves as, you know, weak or definitely a lot of them are under more stress than others. And so they support each other, right? And again, it can help you avoiding self-pity because no matter how bad it is for some of you, some of you have it worse. So I'm hoping, you know, that you can use each other as a springboard and you can motivate each other. But definitely you have to be proactive about this because otherwise people start picking on each other, right? Because they're stressed and then relationships break down, right? Okay. Have I ignored anyone who tells me not to finish school or not to try so hard? I don't know if you have any pressure to just quit. Um, and you have to, you know, no, I don't want to really, you know, they're not helping me. Have I found friends who inspire me um, to become who I really am, to develop my capacities and achieve the virtue of rational ambition, right? Did I trust someone who turned out to harm me? If so, how did I, how can I recover and regain an active mind? So it's making that transition from passively reacting to stuff to actually, you know, to actively taking charge. So I'm going to give you some time to talk about relationship issues because I would imagine, you know, that's quite it's probably a lot of levels of that. And, and don't talk about it. You know, I don't want you to talk about this general level. Well, in general, the relationships are better. I mean, you can be very specific, <laughs> right? Because it's your life you're talking about. It's your book you're writing. Um, you know, if, if you really don't want Professor Beck to hear about it, um, you could not name names or something. Um, I, you know, I'm not into gossip or anything. I just want to help you know yourself. Okay. 
Okay, so. Okay, one done, two done, three done, four done. Five, six, seven, Seven is right around 58, okay. When it gets up to, to eight or so, I think I'm gonna move ahead. I think that's over 50%. And so I think we can move on here. Um, all right. Have I tried to escape from suffering? I mean, the internet provides every sort of distraction and I really don't like a lot of what goes on about people describing, you know, all their ways of escaping. <laughs> and it's one thing to have a stress relief, but I just, I don't know. I, to me, like, if it's possible to do something physical, even if you can't get out of the house, like exercise to me is a much better stress reliever than, than putting yourself in some fantasy world, but um, each of you makes your own judgment. Have I tried to escape? Does that help? Like sometimes, yeah, I watched a movie for two hours and I did, I, I did some of that too, so I understand. Um, so sometimes it helps or does it only make it worse because then you have to go back to reality. Um, so to what extent does it help and you have more energy for addressing the situation? And to what extent is just this temporary high and then you come back and you, you resent your situation even more? So I'll give you a minute to talk about that. Puja is done, done. <laughs> All done, Puja. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, May wish is done. Puja is done done. Okay, I think, yep, they're coming in like crazy now. All right, good. Now, the next part is the place of injustice, right? And this is important because I want you to develop political consciousness. It's very important because, uh, you know, just trying to make distinctions and not just whine about politicians. I understand a lot of you have political leaders that are really corrupt, but um, still it's better to make distinctions than to not make distinctions because when you just do that blanket stuff, it's just frustrating, depressing. You, you know what you can't control. But I think sometimes just for, the sake of intellectual distinctions and just the pleasure of being able to be articulate 
about your country and, and being an informed citizen, even if you don't have power, just being informed is more empowering than just not wanting to think about it. That's passive. So, okay. To what extent has injustice made life more difficult for you, right? How can I face those injustices? And this today, our main one we're talking about is sexism. And then for the next class is racism. And then the following Sunday is, um, I have you read from two women from, um, developing countries, one from the Mideast and one from Africa. So, but they're Muslims anyway. So to what extent has injustice made life more difficult? Um, it could be because of your race, your ethnicity, your gender, um, your class. Okay, how can I face those injustices and not blame myself when the system has been set up for me to fail, right? While still actively working to succeed within the system. And that's hard, right? That's again why I, I don't blame AUW students because on top of all this other stuff, there's sexism. And, um, and in a lot of your countries, women probably are set up to fail. And so you have all these additional obstacles. But the thing is, I mean, you have to see them, name them, and then fight against them, right? Once you know it's there, then you know what you're up against, and you can have an active mind rather than a passive mind. How has greed, the greed of those before you or around you, in my country or nearby, how has greed made my life more difficult? And then how has generosity, the generosity of money or talented people, every good teacher you ever had, every good advisor, coach, NGO person could have made more money. Every one of them that's good at it could have made more money, but they wanted to give young people, enable them to move farther forward, right? So to what extent have I been harmed by greed? To what extent have I been helped by generosity? And neither one of those I controlled, right? So you lose because of these things, but you win also. And then once you realize how much you benefited from this generosity of others, and again, it's not just money, it's talent. Like there are rich people, um, Mackenzie, what's her name? Scott, I mean, they can give money away, but they know that it's the people on the ground that are doing the work. All she has is money, right? And they do feel that way. All I have is money, but you guys have the talent. You guys have created the organization, right? You have done the quality work. I can just give you the means, right? But then the talented people appreciate that because I have all these great ideas, but I don't have any money. So it, you know, it works both ways. And then if you realize how much you benefit, then you'll want to think, well, how do I want to develop my talents, get those pieces of paper, get that expertise, and then give back, right? But first you have to realize how much you've benefited from other people doing that very thing. So I'll give you some time. That's a long one, right? That should take you a while. How have you suffered from injustice? How have you benefited from generosity? Okay, so if that takes longer, I'm not going to, um, you know, try to tell you to hurry up or anything.
Okay. All right, so we're starting. One, Savikun Mewish, Asia. Poppy. Puja, Sukti, Rita, Falak, Ritika, Okay, so that's nine. I think that's enough to move on. Um, okay, now, if you get, that could be enough for a post, um, but here's another section of it. There's just more stuff for you to keep writing down and thinking about. Um, because we do talk about Aristotle's virtues and vices during the whole class. And so if focusing on COVID helps you get those things in your head, um, great, because we're going to talk about them. The reading for today was about women and how their capabilities are um, crippled and how the way the virtues and vices are interpreted uh, can be sexist and oppressive, right? So this one is just about COVID. Now, Temperance, right? So you have the situation where you're, you're sheltered in place. Have you let yourself get it, gain weight and get out of shape? Or have you used the time to exercise at home and get physically stronger? Because you have more time, like you're not running around all the time. Has your diet gotten better because you're more aware, right? And so again, wherever you are now, where do you want to be going forward? Do you want to use this as a time to improve these things? Or have you let, let it you know, go because uh, you feel overwhelmed, which is understandable. It just makes it worse. <laughs> um, so think about that for just a minute. I'm not going to give you too much time on that. Those are sort of straightforward answers. Okay, so I'm starting to get some, yeah, okay. I do want to tell you that um, I would guess that when you go to grad school or get a job, in the interview, they might, I don't see why they wouldn't ask you, what did you learn from COVID, right? And so I'm giving you this cheat sheet for you know filling out a good application or getting a good interview right <laughs> you know if you've thought through all this stuff i think that they would be impressed um but anyway i don't know because uh i never did live through covid when i was doing a job interview so okay here's the next one have i allowed covid to trigger many fears inside of me right have I allowed myself to be overwhelmed by fear? Uh, have I allowed it to make me feel like a victim, right? Do I list in my mind all the ways COVID has harmed me, right? Do I follow up? Okay, here's, I mean, I understand this, right? And then I couldn't do this and I couldn't do this and I couldn't do this and I, right? <laughs> yeah, then the question is, how can you actively respond to each of those obstacles, right? You've got to fight back with your mind, right? 
And so have I sought conversations with other people so we can acknowledge the obstacles and inspire each other by giving advice about how to overcome the fear, right? Do you find yourself in a panic, right? And um, this is very similar to the questions I asked before, right? It's just taking that list of virtues and vices. Um, have I become a coward, basically? Um, okay, so, and then I'll go through a couple more and then I'm gonna give us all a 10 minute break. And if you wanna spend some of that time writing, that would be great. You know, just do whatever you need to do. So when this class is over, you're gonna be able to post right away. That, that's my goal. Okay, so I'll, Bennett's generosity. This again is a repeat. Um, so have people throughout the world shown generosity? Have I done that? How have the wealthiest people given money and set up programs? Um, so scientists, if you can think of scientists like now with Biden, the US is giving millions of vaccines away, right? We won't talk about what happened before the election. Okay, how have religious leaders, have religious leaders stepped up, political leaders, uh, leaders in your community, or have they abused their power? And they told people what the people want to hear and made the situation worse just to get money or power, votes, popularity. And so I'll stop there and you can take a break or you can start brainstorming about, you know, what I know is Fauci and um, the evangelicals in my country and Trump and his minions, you know. So I have my examples and I don't know how much you know about those examples, they're pretty awful. But you need to think about your countries and I wanna learn about your countries. So, um, all right, so it is 10.05 and we will, I'll give you time till 10.15, which is a longer break, except that you could spend part of it writing and get your homework done, right? It just gives you that option of which you'd rather do, and that's fine. Make your judgment. Okay.
Oh, I forgot to turn off the recording. <laughs> Pause, okay. Okay, um, could people put in the chat if Amal, Ashlyn, Aurora, Christina, Diana is sick, um, Fatima, Fatima, Hadil, Jana Tool, Marjana, Nuchat, Papuja oh, is here. Sumaya, Supti, I think Supti is here. If, if you're here, I didn't get you. So put your name in the chat to tell me that you're actually here. Okay, Puja's here. Yeah, I knew that because I made fun of your dun dun. Uh, soup tea is here. Okay, soup tea is here. Um, Okay, so we're gonna continue with this and there is overlap. So um, on this one, anger, have people become more high spirited and critical of each other, more short tempered because of COVID or have they become more gentle and forgiving toward each other because of COVID? Um, Obviously, I would like to be more, you know, forgiving. I just, <laughs> I'm not going to let you not do the work. <laughs> but that's, you know, I'm very forgiving that you had it in, I mean, forgiving about a lot of things, but not that you don't have to do it. Um, you may want to give examples of one or more of each of those. What about you? Have you become less patient with yourself, right? And with those around you? Because often the way you treat yourself is what you project onto other people, right? If you judge yourself, you judge other people. If you pick on yourself, you pick on other people. Um, so what do you think is the best way to respond? The way that will activate your mind and that of those around you, enabling you to keep focused, right? How much anger, uh, too much anger, too little anger. I would say at this time, there's probably too much because, because of fear. Anger is a secondary emotion and it, its source is fear. You're just feeling vulnerable. It's a survival instinct sort of reaction but it's a culture, you know, um, cultures um, allow for people to get angry or not, right? It gets sort of assimilated into a cultural norm, but the basic instinct there, every society has to decide what sort of anger it's going to allow. Um, so I'll actually combine that one with the next one and then I'll give you some time. Rational honor. So have you recognized and honored people who go over and beyond what they have to, who've managed to deal with the COVID situation and create, they can reach out to people, they create online groups, 
they do things that really uh, prevents things from getting worse to create a quality of life and community in the face of COVID. Have you done things like that? Things that, the, the reason I say honorable is that they're not anything you're forced to do, um, but they're, but the community should honor them because they're about community building. So those are the two things to write about. I'll give you uh, some time. Um, high spiritedness, anger, and then honor. Um, actively creating a higher quality of community life. Professor? Yes? Do you mind repeating the last part you said about? Um... Rush honor. Are there some people who went out of their way to create online groups? Professor, I can't hear you very well. Oh, okay. I don't know, it's my part. Is that better? Okay. I mean, it it says it here, people who went out of their way to create online groups, support groups, or improve the quality of life. Maybe they did it, you know, in their communities. Um, they gave food, you know, distribute food. Um, so those are people who acted honorably. So can you think of examples of that? Did you do some of that? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Okay, good. I don't know if people are still on break or what. Um, could somebody put in the chat if they really are still working on it? Okay. Okay, so, all right. Okay, so Sabe Kun is not done yet, all right? Okay. Okay. All right. So now the next one is ambition. Okay. 
Have you made sure you didn't let COVID cripple you in the development of your natural abilities so you can eventually help others by getting the education and training necessary to help other people with problems that require expertise, right? I, I think it's great to help people by giving them food, right? But if you teach them, right? You, if you give a person a fish, they can eat for a day if you teach them how to fish. So um, giving people um, tools that require that you have expertise, um, like being a doctor or being a teacher, I think, right? But being a um, I mean, just everything is something people need that that's why you get the expertise is because somebody needs it. So um, if you run into obstacles, have you figured out who to talk to to overcome the obstacles, right? When you falter, what do you do? Do you avoid blaming other people when you have some control over the situation and can do something or do you blame others? Um, and when it's appropriate, they really are holding you back. So how do you address the obstacles called caused by corruption or ignorance? So the main thing is, right, you're, you're trying to develop your natural abilities. You want to eventually use them to help other people. What are the obstacles? Have you figured out how to overcome those obstacles, right? I'm going to give you some time to do that because I think that's important. But if if you finish early on that one, have you developed a sense of humor, right? You can you can go to the next one. Um, but I, I will give you time on that because that is important. I want every one of you um, to um, not let COVID cripple cripple your trajectory before you before this happened, right? All of you were moving forward, you know, we're doing really well. And I want to make sure if there's anything I can do to help you keep keep up the pace. Um, so. Yeah. Professor? Yes. Please, can you repeat the questions again? I'm not. Okay. okay, so I mean, all I'm doing is pretty much reading off of the thing, if you can read it. So you're in school, you're developing your talents, so you can help other people. If you've run into obstacles, what have you done about it, right? And then you can just read it, I think. Is there anything else? No more, Professor, thank you. Sure, if, if there's something other than what I wrote, because all I did was read my own thing. Professor? Yes? Most of the answer to this question are overlapping. So in my case, some of them are overlapping, Professor. That's right. And that's why I want you to say you finish early, right? <laughs> I, do. I do want you, if it's overlapping, just say you're done and move on. Because I, um, I just wanted to make it clear that the list of kinds of suffering in Seneca is connected to the virtues in Aristotle. That's what I tried to do with that letter, you know, a month ago, but that, that was too much of a leap. So I think, yeah, so if you think it's completely overlapping, don't write anything and just say, I'm done. Let's, let's go. And that's fine. Okay, 
And this one is also overlapping. Has COVID taught you a lot about yourself, about your strength of character, right? Have you developed some rational pride, right? So what you have to do instead of feeling overwhelmed, figure out how to overcome the obstacles and then give yourself a pat on the back, right? Take pride in the fact, you know, take, have, um, give yourself a feeling of pleasure and accomplishment for overcoming the obstacles. And then, you know, you're inspiring yourself basically. Um, and so I think I'm gonna move faster through this because again, it, it repeats a lot at this point. Friendship, have you developed friendship bonds? How has your economic situation been a source of suffering and how have you addressed it, right? Um, and I know a lot of you have that. It's just that, that there have been a lot of organizations, you know, donors to a AUW that have, that have stepped up here. So if you could just see it within that context, that there's, there's good and bad there's people helping and there's, you know, people harming. So if you could get that. And then I think most of this repeats the political system. What I want you to take a minute on is the educational system. Is the educational system designed to educate children, youth and future citizens to develop these personal, social, and political virtues, right? Is the educational system designed to promote strength of character? The way that I've gone through it here um, so that you can play your roles in the future. You can overcome obstacles in the future. You can understand suffering, right? Just and unjust and what you can do. So you just develop that eye of the soul for the rest of your life. To what extent does the educational system really promote strength of character? So if you, you know, if you, most of the other ones I think are, are repeats, but I'll stop here and I'll give you some time and that'll, that'll be it on this. That's the last point, of course, the educator has to point out the educational system this is my obligation.
Okay. All right, so some people are finishing up here. We got three. At least I hope you understand why I went into education because I thought there was this gaping hole in educational systems. They aren't educating for character, even though everyone is experiencing all these character tests all the time. The educational system doesn't ever name it, you know, so that you can be proactive about it. Um, but that was my thing, right? Everybody has their thing that it's just their aha moment. This is what I want. And, and I want each of you to find some aha thing that really means a lot to you. And you're willing to, to just do a lot to end up there, being able to do that. Um, all right. So next thing is, okay, you should have a whole bunch of stuff down. You can use that, you have three choices. You can use that as the post for the day, if you're that far behind. You can use it as a substitute post for um, any day at all, <laughs> I don't care. Or you can use it as the outline for your paper. And you should be able to get that paper done quickly, right? So that's that. Now. Or professor, we can use it as an extra credit. Extra credit? Yeah. You can use it as extra yeah. credit. And I, I posted an extra credit thing there, too. It's just most of you are behind. And so. It, I just want all of you to, to get caught up as soon as possible. That's, that's what I want because I, of course it weighs on your minds that you're behind. Um, okay, here is the other possibility. If you- Chris, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. Um, you mentioned about aha, maybe. So what does it mean by that? That, there's something you think the world needs that you think that you get a lot of satisfaction out of doing. Right? Something you like to do that you think the world needs to be done, to have done. Okay. Okay. Like I have a student whose dad was sick. She lived in a village the doctors in the village were, were not good and it caused a lot more suffering for her dad. She wants to be in public health. She wants to be a doctor in a little village, right? Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Yeah, so whatever it is that you can do, you enjoy doing and you think the world needs, go for it, that's it. All right, so this is, if you don't wanna write your paper on suffering, great. These are other possibilities. I've said them, but I didn't type them up. So now I type them up, but I don't wanna talk about them anymore. I just, there they are. Just to let you know, you do not have to write your paper on suffering. Okay, here's the next thing I did to try and prevent you from suffering anymore. <laughs> okay. I said, okay, for posts, for those of you who are doing makeup work, I just cut out a bunch of attachments. I said, do this, do that, do that. And then don't go to the YouTube video. Don't waste your time. Get this done, right? Read only page eight of the letter. Compare it to Aristotle's view of friendship and your own experiences. Read Miles's letter, one reaction. Read the outline about suffering, one reaction. Uh, well, I said we will cover it more completely today, right? Write four examples of suffering, your own experience. You've already written those down. 
And then what did I learn from the, this material about a healthy psyche? You should be able to do that one in 30 minutes now. Okay, got it? Then post it right there. Next one. For on the August, Augustine, I, I chopped off all that other stuff. Don't listen to the YouTube. Don't try to read the other stuff. Read Augustine on evil, write two reactions. Read New York Times article, three reactions about how to raise children. Write your reflection. What did I learn from this about raising children? Um, 350 words. Don't go to the YouTube, get it done, done. Should take you an hour, maybe, right? Next one, read Francis outlines from page seven to the end, it's newspaper articles. Write three reactions. What did you learn from Francis about your view of a healthy psyche? Then with the Martin Luther King, Ignore the outline until the last pages about nonviolent resistance movements. Read five pages from the letter to Birmingham jail. It is about practical wisdom, knowing the best choice in a particular situation. King explains why he's in Birmingham. Why now? Why? We tried nonviolence. It didn't work. We tried negotiating. It didn't work. We try, he gives you very specific. This is practical wisdom. Then do your reflection, including which of Pope Francis points do you think a healthy psyche should embrace? Do you think participating in nonviolent demonstrations is part of having a healthy psyche if you live in a nation that's unjust? Don't look at the YouTube video, 350 words, done. An hour, done. Okay, next one. Read Mill, beginning from number four. Two responses. Read the outline on Bentham, two responses. Read the outline on Mill and Liberty, two responses. Do a reflection, get it done. Okay, Hedges. The theme of this lecture is corruption of utilitarianism. Read this, read that, react there, get it done. Okay, Kant, this is about Kant. This is about the corruption of Kant. Read this, react, read this, react. Don't look at the YouTube. This is your final reflection, get it done. Okay, then here's the paper, here's the rubric, here's the notebook, done. Here's the suffering. Here's what we did today. Done. Okay. You should be able to catch up in eight hours, right? That's it. No more phobias. Done. Here's the Benedict. Read her article, seven pages, two reactions. Read my paper, two reactions. Read the list of questions and write your answers to the questions. Then write what you learned from answering the questions. Final reflection. Do you think morality is a convenient term for socially approved habits? Do you think most people live by habit? Do what they do, com compare themselves to other people. Is this a good life? Why or why not? Is this a healthy uh, psyche? It's well integrated. Okay, done. All right, now we're on today's, okay? So now this is what I told you to do. I'm telling you to do stuff now. <laughs> Before I said, oh, well, you might think about this or that. Eh. <laughs> do this, I said so. Okay, I told you to read this paper, which is not a hard paper. The English is easy, right? It's 14 pages. It's not hard. That's what I told you to do. And I told you at the beginning of the class, I would give you some time to write your re reactions, even though you were supposed to do it before class. I'm giving you time in class because I want you to get this stuff done right away. So if you haven't read it, uh, okay. 
If you have not read it, you must shut down your machine, read it, and come back in 20 minutes. I'm, you know, we're not having any of this sort of sitting there, not having come prepared, then thinking I'll listen to the YouTube video afterwards. The YouTube video is for people who absolutely couldn't make it to class. So if you did not read it, shut down, read it and come back when you're ready for class. And maybe next time you'll be ready for class. It wasn't asking a lot, 15 easy pages, 10 pages per normal class. So, okay, and then I just have to trust you on that. The people who have read it will discuss it, right? Um, well, why don't I put it this way? I'm gonna, we're gonna take another 10 minute break. If you haven't read it, you better read it. If you have read it, good for you, you can take a break. So, we're, it's 1044, 45. We're going to break till 1055, 10 minutes. And I hope that all of you, it, I don't just look at that paper, get the general idea and be prepared because I'm going to call on each of you. Okay, that's it. So I'll give you 10 minutes, go. <laughs>
Okay, we have three more minutes. Okay, one minute. <clears throat> Okay, I am going to read what I typed because people say they are confused. Tell me what's confusing about it. For Sunday, we will begin the class with me going through the attachments related to the paper. One is questions about different kinds of suffering. The other has some other ideas for papers. 1,000 words, three quotes from class readings, for your citations, put the date of the stream, the name of the attachment and the page number or other outside readings. For citations, do a standard type, MLA, et cetera. I do not care which one. This should take maybe one hour. Of course it hasn't, it's taken two hours. <laughs> then I will ask you to tell the class your reaction to the attachments. Number one, at least one reaction to the paper, 14 pages. The reading is not difficult. If you have not read it, I will ask you to go offline and read it and come back when you're ready to participate. I want everyone to participate. People who have read it may leave the class earlier. This might not be true today because I've done so much Back, back up, but in the future, that's true. If you come prepared, you leave early, you have time to finish the post, All right? If you leave 30 minutes early, 30 minutes to finish the post, post it right away, get this over with. Okay, the reading will not take more than 30 minutes. This is not asking a lot. I also want you to do most of your posts during class. It should only take 30 minutes after class to finish the posts and then post them. Okay, I would prefer that you do the next three things before class. If you do not, I will go over these outlines and you can write your favorite arguments while I'm going over the outline. I will call on each of you and expect you to say something, okay? And that's these other posts. Mill on race, 
mill on the subjection of women, mill on homosexuals. So that's what we're going to do. Got it? By the end of the class, you should be just about done. Don't go back over the YouTube video. Don't start over. Don't waste time and energy. Write up your notes. Write your final reflection. 350 words. Move on, right? I want you to feel empowered. I don't want you feel like a victim of this class, right? Okay, so now you will react to the paper. Everybody needs to comment, okay? All right, Maywish, what did you get from reading that paper? Okay, so I basically uh, like the main theme of uh, the paper, which is about uh, women having as much reason as men. And the interesting point is that how the reasoning of, uh, uh, well, what was her name? I forgot it. Her reasoning is correct that it could be useful for the whole society in terms of if we just accept that women can uh, reason as well as men, then it, we can better educate them and give them the opportunity to nourish this capability so that they could contribute to the overall good of uh, the society. Okay, uh, very good. Okay, I just want to point out, people think philosophy is up in the clouds, nobody cares, right? But it's not, it's actually at the very core of a culture, right? If you define a woman as not as fully rational, all the other, that justifies all the other kinds of oppression, starting with she doesn't eat as well, right? She doesn't get educated. She has to do the dirty work, right? So I hope, does that make sense to you, Maywish? It does. It really does. And once we form these values inside the culture, then all other religious problems, they just keep on getting attached to this and then we are unable to get come out of the, all the problems. Yeah. Do you understand why then I'm not going to water down my class? I do. <laughs> yeah, okay. You have to use your reason. You have to know you have it. And yeah. that's my job. Okay, Isabel, what you got? Professor, I'm not sure. Because I'm actually reading about one's meal and there are a lot of important parts that I'm actually uh, like interested to read about it, especially, uh, I mean, in the part of like, uh, women are afraid to complain. Uh, they have lived with their husband and abusive husband. So this point is really, I mean, really want to discuss with that, that is because uh, it actually happens all the time in the community, especially in the families who are, I mean, women who are actually depends on their husband to live with. So whatever their husband is trying to abuse them, but they have never complained about it because they're afraid if I, if I complain about it and then if my husband leave me and then what can I do to survive? So this is very big problems that is happening actually in the community and all the time people uh, i mean women are afraid to complain just because of these uh, biggest issues that is happening and it's because they don't have jobs so they are just trying to and another important point is they cannot uh, i mean react to what their husband is doing it's because they are feeling shy with the society like i mean uh uh, if the husband leave them, they will be, like, I mean, they will be alone and they will also get bullied by the community. Like, oh, this is, uh, this woman is, uh, I mean, widow, so they don't get respect from the community and society. So I think this is really interesting uh, thing that yeah, I- they, they would not be well integrated, right? They would be maladaptive according to Ruth Benedict. Okay, so exactly. you know, actually that's a step for, ahead i'm going to take that but that's the outline and so right now we're just reacting to the paper but that's okay i'm just going to move on do you understand that right now the first reaction is the paper but that's a good point and i appreciate it and um i'll just ask rita rita what you got 
for the paper. Uh, yeah, hello, Professor. Uh, I actually agree with my wish that uh, the power of reason is really necessary for both um, women and men. Uh, like <laughs> to make, yeah, I also learned about that. <laughs> okay. So they, yeah, so they can make uh, good judgments about how can they live their lives and uh, also how, well, what, who to marry and how can they understand their marriage so they can prevent like divorce or uh, the uh, violence in, in marriage. Also, uh, I read that uh, the education of women of reasons is also necessary for women to be good mothers. I think I can relate to this because um, I see many of my friends in my village, uh, they, they got married in early age and they don't know what to do with their children. Like, because they, they got married because of their parents uh, tell them to, to do so. So they have no, any other reason to choose what to do in their lives. So I think, yeah, this is, this education of reason is really important, especially for women. Okay, good. Um, yeah, can you understand, first of all, with Isabel, do you understand why John Stuart Mill's book is called a classic? Because he wrote it like hundreds of years ago and all the arguments are still valid. Does that make sense to you, Isabel? That's, yes, that, yes, yes. that's what I think of as brilliant, that someone can see these patterns in their society and they know this isn't just about me or my society, right? It's about humanity, right? And with Rita, the thing I wanted to point out was, can you see how in 14 pages you can write, make all these points, right? Like you can, you can recognize patterns and it takes you about three sentences or four sentences to explain it. Does that make sense, Rita? Uh, yes, Professor. And they're all interconnected, right? Reason, education, getting a job, not afraid to speak out, better better marriage, because you make your husband accountable to be a decent husband, per, you know, better, better children. But again, when you go back to moral relativism, right? Ruth Benedict would say that women who are well integrated accept sexism and women that don't accept it, that are maladaptive, right? <laughs> that, I mean, that's moral relativism. So, so think about it because when you're reading her article, you probably go, oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense, right? And then you go, wait a sec, <laughs> that, right? you guys, you all go have to go back home and get married if you think that's important. You're all a bunch of weirdos. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Isabel, what did you think of the reading, the, tw the 14 pager? Oh, I mean, Isabel, you already talked. You're just, you're two squares there. Uh, Masoma, what have you got? Hello? Yes, Masoma? Okay, Professor. Uh, professor, I found it very interesting and then uh, reasonable. So yeah, I uh, I like the idea that they applied. They also, you know, uh, you know, they synthesize uh, what the United Nations uh, declare about the human rights, and then they talk about how religious is corrupted in this uh, about women or how they are using, you know, your uh, the beliefs to make people, you know. To, our, to accept sexism, uh, uh, yeah. And then I, I really liked uh, uh, that uh, uh, all of these uh, problems and issues and irrational thought is, you know, pointed out in this paper. So yeah, I. Uh, so I think there was one point where it was mentioned that yeah, our natural inferiority claim that whether women are you know naturally inferior than men is actually undermining all the cap capability of the woman and it's actually built a route for the people you know to ignore the other capability i mean it's insecure women you know regarding their health body integrity self-respect 
respect, job security, freedom of expression and all of those human capabilities. And I liked it and I accept that this is true. And if you are saying that women are naturally inferior, then we are accepting all this kind of, you know, uh, criti uh, I mean, racism and discrimination against women. And then I also liked uh, that it was talking about the uh, power of education and reason that how, uh, and then uh, Will Stonecraft also uh, talk about that, you know, this should be an uh, uh, early childhood, we should uh, get training on how to engage in critical thinking and rationally thinking. And then uh, that also, uh, I point the like, but Professor, you mentioned that, you know, it's not necessary for women to be atheist in order to, you know, accept these things. Uh, I mean, in order to, you know, uh, to, I mean, completely ignore religious because religious are sexism. It's not necessary, really. I, I mean, God is not saying something like this or religion is not saying something. Maybe it's misunderstood or maybe at some point are, but the other points are, you know, uh, good. But then, uh, yeah. So I like that, you know, it's not necessary for us to be atheist or ignore religious completely in order to give equal rights to the people. And then, yeah, I, I really like this, Professor. How about, and then, uh, yeah. how about the argument Professor. where if you say women have a weaker reason, and so women are by nature more emotional, but if you're emotional, you're going to go to hell. So in other words, God sort of made women so that they would end up damning themselves to hell for eternity like that's not fair right <laughs> yeah professor i think it's in another part it was mentioning that uh, you know in most of the culture women are expected to be more modest than men and i was like why <laughs> should it be right <laughs> is it like uh, i don't know i think it's forced on women even if if we find practical uh, you know uh, um, uh, practical uh, how can we say practical you know I mean evidence to to see that like truly women are modest but then we have to see the root why they are modest are they first are they want to be uh, like on that condition to be modest every time and not to you know criticize yeah. what no. yeah and it's sort of blaming them if if men feel sexually attracted unless you dress up you know cover yourself yeah, Whose yeah. Fault is that like get over it, guys? It's not my fault. <laughs> but you're blaming the I woman, right? Just this for, is this is uh, you know an important issue in our culture. Uh, uh, men are never thought that you know you should be modest. You should not look to the women that they are just or or they you know provoke you. But then they are just saying that it is you. Uh, I mean, they are pointing to women that it is your fault. You should be very you know modest and you should you know dress up uh, 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 in a good way so do, so do, so that you could not you know evoke at the other men I, I don't I don't see that why they are not training their device that you know they should be behave in a certain way they should not look at those women, right I don't know professor right. I think yeah, right. it's not here actually everybody gets their first turn and then we can open it up I mean it's fine. Okay. That's why it, it helps to be prepared, right? Um, Aisha, what you got? Aisha, go ahead. Aisha, are you there? Okay, Saida? Yes, sir. Hello. Oh, go ahead, Aisha. Oh, okay. So, oh, you were not hearing me. I, I didn't notice. Okay. Uh, so this paper actually, for me, I feel like it actually describes the um, stereotype of women uh, in the society. I mean, the status of the women in society and how um, United Nations actually uh, clarified, like, we have to be um, something that... Uh, the women should be treated ju justly and I mean, their rights should be protected. And I mean, they actually ga gave the, us the opportunities to exercise the, our natural capacities. Yeah, that's what it is. And 
uh, Masuma already explained it elaborately. <laughs> okay, so I did want to say about the UN. So in my country, so many people are taught to hate the UN. And that's because we want to be able to declare war whenever we want to whoever we want. But the thing is, the UN does a whole lot more than that, right? And they're made impotent to the extent to which countries like the US won't listen to them. But if your country, or if you get the impression the UN is bad, right? Or if your leaders say, you know, it might be because they're in a power struggle with the UN. And so if you could just remember that the UN is definitely on the right side of things when it comes to climate, when it comes to women, comes to children. So just don't pay attention to that political BS, right? <laughs> just keep in mind, right? That it has this capabilities thing and it's a good thing. Does that make sense, Asa? Yes, Professor. Yeah. yeah, be a critical thinker, okay. Saida, what you got? Okay, Poppy, you got something? Okay. Ritika? Oh, Poppy, no, okay. Ritika, uh, yes, do you have it? Go ahead. Uh, okay, Professor. Like in paper, there is a lot about UN and feminism kind of things, but uh, there is one point I want to point out. Like in the past, uh, members of certain race, sex, or creed were considered incapable of exercising, sorry, practical reasons. Like uh, not only in the past, uh, even nowadays, there are some kind of discrimination uh based on gender like uh in some villages in my country like uh female are not allowed to go to schools like they are denial to education and some sort of uh, caste are untouch untouchable uh, these kind of things professor that's it yep okay and then once you deny them education then you've got them because then they don't have they aren't gonna be able to qualify for jobs, right? Even if they wanted mm. them. So it's all over after that. So, yep. Soma? Uh, yes, Professor, uh, I also want to say that, you know, in this paper, I, I see that a lot of, you know, uh, it was, you know, uh, parallel to what Mel was saying. I, I think a lot of, I see a lot of application of Mel theory in this paper. Yep, they, you know, they, it's repeats again because it's these patterns. Okay, so now did you have something? Yes, Professor. Uh, yes, my friend already said so many. So I, I would like to talk about the win I got is like, uh, we are human. So even men and women, we are all together. Like we, we bore. Uh, with an uh, equal right. So why, uh, why we are discriminated by the war? It is because of they, uh, they fight our weakness, I feel like that. So like, uh, according to that, uh, we should be strong enough like a man. And then the other reason is the religions also said, uh, uh, the religion also said we are equal and that uh, God did it make a law that uh, when we be uh, like a dominant or girl will be under their control. It is the the it is not the way that God give the law. So all the all, all the thing is coming from uh, the society and that the human being because like why just uh, men they just like create their own law or their power to dominate the girl like that, yeah. Okay, and so I hope you can start seeing also um, the way women's oppression works, it's God's will, right? Well, remember the response to COVID, it's God's will, right? It's also passive. 
and um, manipulative. So anyway, yeah, it, I mean, the, it's God's will. I mean, especially if you think it through, like God created half of the human race with this intent that they would be damned to hell for eternity because they don't have enough reason. I mean, really? Good grief. What, what sort of a cruel dictator do you think God is? <laughs> I don't know. I just think it's crazy. Um, all right, um, Puja. Are you there, Puja? Yes, Professor, can you hear me? I was fixing my background noise, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, so I, I read a few of the papers that were posted yesterday for the readings uh, before sleeping. So uh, what I uh, got to know is like, from the post, uh, the paper uh, about uh, about Mills, who pointed out uh, why it's important for someone to speak out for equality, either it's a racial freedom or even natural inequality in the society, which means like uh, claiming that equality of sexes is na natural and the term natural inequality was kind of new for me as I have never thought about it and I didn't it didn't make sense to me as a culture as we all know that culture molds nature and nature does not talk about sex and inequality according to my knowledge is that the idea of racial, racial domination another point between the black and white people as it was never meant to be that only ra white uh, race domination was the most appropriate or a natural way of organizing society in a better way. But like it was a culture developed by the people who started discrimination based on racism, uh, which is a kind of illogical for my understanding. I think history is what we believe the most and is one of the thing which is teaching us even false belief, which. I think eventually is going to reject it sometime. And the paper on philosophy, uh, feminism, and the development of international culture by uh, our professor, uh, what see, it made me to realize is that the fact that women also have a belief system that men are superior than uh, women, which is why I think, uh, in my context of my country, females of rural areas are still lagging behind, not just uh, have enough capacity of believing their cap capabilities of themselves, which makes them think that they are not powerful and like they won't know about their rights and if everything they want to do there in life. Thus, I think women should come out of the box and like they start, they should start exploring themselves and should know uh, the fact that they can lead the society in a more systematic way and can be more powerful leaders in the society, which is especially these days, I mean, in few decades that women have started raising their powerful voices against injustice and discriminations also about the women rights and equality. But like, I think it is still has to be grown up more so that they don't lag behind with anyone. I mean, that's all about me what i got from the uh people there are also paper about homosexuality and heterosexuality. yeah actually we're not going to cover that yeah, yet wait, that's wait, all wait, i just got to just know wait that. wait one paper yeah. at a time okay so i did so once again i want you to entertain this idea that people will say history is driven by hunger or by power or by fear or whatever, and I say, no, it's driven by ideas, people's ideas about what they're afraid of and the cause of their fear, right? People's ideas, and those ideas sometimes were planted, like the idea that women are inferior was centuries before you're born, right? But it has this incredible impact in the way it's structured. And then, like um, who just said, women accept their inferiority. That's an idea, right? And so it's that idea that they accept that women are inferior. That drives their behavior, right? 
it's you know fear of what will happen if they don't but there's this incredibly powerful dynamic between your idea and your behavior and um it's just inaccurate for people to look and say oh it's fear that's driving them and i say no no it's their ideas about the good or god or the cause of their fear the cure of their fear it's not that fear itself, we instantly start interpreting these things, right? And so it's our interpretations. That's what culture is. And um, anyway, so. Professor, I think you have a comment here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, sure. Yeah, just briefly and like also generally that um, if we accept that we are rational, as rational as men, so how come throughout this long history, we just let them feed us that we are somehow inferior to them? Uh, and yeah, how come we didn't revolt it or we were like out there the way they had been politically active, active in all terms. Like if you look out throughout the religious and political history and everything, it has always been men who have been dominating. So if we are equally rational, so how did we uh, didn't we challenge it and right. accept it? And so that's where John Stuart Mill's essay is good, because he right Isabel, because he starts out with that assumption about the blank slate, you know, and we learn by imitation, but he actually takes that methodology to argue for the most radical change in in social systems ever right? To treat women as equal is more radical than anything else, right? It's because it's over 50% of the human race, right? There's no other argument for getting over racism or classism that accounts for 50%, right? And so, um, so that's why I want to go over it. Because on the one hand, you can say people just learn by imitation and habit and blah, blah, and, and so they get conditioned. But every time a, a little girl is born, like Mary Wollstonecraft, they figure out, I'm not stupider than that boy, right? That's their natural, I mean, their natural, they catch on. And then they either start accepting this conditioning or they, you know, they just get frustrated, angry or whatever, but no matter how forceful the conditioning is, if it goes against nature, you're just going to have it. There's, you're never going to have a well-integrated society because it's based on a lie. Is that? But it. But I think we should go to that outline. Is that helpful? Yeah, and also one last comment on the religious aspect. Masuma pointed out that um, it's not the religion that reinforces such discrimination. I think we should re-question that as well. For example, specifically for Islam. So if Islam does affirm the equal intellectual capabilities of women and men, how come there isn't a single female prophet like among the one like 24,000 prophets? Like if we are equally rational, so there should have been at least one female prophet. I think we should think that way as well. Yeah, okay. I know with Christianity, it's, well, how come all the disciples were men? And I would say, well, if they were single men roaming around the countryside, you know, preaching, and a woman would have gotten stoned to death. So that's pretty obvious why. Plus, Jesus treated women equally. And there's a story about that. You know, he told Mary, told Martha to get out of the kitchen and get in the living room and talk about serious things. So I think the message there is that Jesus treated women as equals. But that's not the way it gets right it gets passed down there's different quotes like paul like who's more of an authority in christianity jesus or paul <laughs> or the old testament right nobody should be more of an authority than jesus and yet blah so i'm not quite sure about the four thousand. right that i don't know enough and i don't want to say things but if you are muslim that's your prerogative you know i just I try to demonstrate that I think critically about the religion I grew up with, and then you guys do whatever you want to do. Um, all right, but here's the thing about Mill. He's, he's going to argue that we ought to set up. And so while I'm going through this, 
I want you to write your, your three favorites, right? Write them down. This is going to be part of your post. You're going to get your homework done. Okay. So, oh, maybe I should stop for a minute to have you write down the reactions from other students that you liked so you can get your post done. Does that seem good to you guys? Okay, Masoma, go ahead. Uh, yes, Professor, I think that's a better idea. Because okay. We'll get time to write. And then, Professor, I just want to make one final reaction. <laughs> Uh, uh, Professor, I, I really liked uh, your point, your argument about that if you are saying that women are inferior to them, to men, then women, uh, you know, uh, we cannot hold women uh, morally responsible because they are inferior. Right. Literally. <laughs> I really like that, Professor. <laughs> yeah. It's a catch-22, you know? Like, yeah, okay, good. All right, so why don't I give you some time? I'm sorry, I should have done this before and you can remind me. I should have just waited after about three people talk to let you, so now you have to rack your brain to remember, but I hope you remember that each other made good comments. So let me just give you time to say, geez, I really liked what Maywish said, or I really like what Masoma said, or I really like what Isabel said. That's what I really want you to develop, right? This community of, of dialogue. So let me give you some time and then I'll, when you're done, you go on the chat and I'm not gonna be able to let you out early this time, but I will in the future. And um, just let me know when you're ready and we'll move on to John Stewart Mill.
Right. So it looks like everybody's got a lot to say. So if you're still writing, um, that's fine. Could someone just tell me that they're still writing to make sure? Okay, so there's one done. Okay, still writing. All right, good. Okay, two done. Okay, three done, four done. I don't know if I've lost some people. I don't know how many are still out there. I've got four done and one still writing. That's all I've got. That's all the feedback I've gotten so far. So um, if there are only like six people left or something, um, okay, I'm gonna move, okay. Okay, Poppy, okay. Looks like there's a consensus, all right. So now this is the outline and I want you to write down your top three, you know, what you think the best arguments are, but I'm going to go over them. I'll stop after a while, right? But I, I hope that you are absolutely amazed at how many arguments he has and how they all still make sense, right? You can understand them. You can come from any country in the world. You can come from any race, any class, any ethnicity, three centuries later, and here we are, right? Oh my goodness. Okay, so he is arguing that uh, the regulation of social relationships, the legal subordination is wrong, and it's a hindrance to human improvement and it needs to be replaced by a principle of perfect equality, right? This is extremely radical, especially if we remember Mill, he thinks we're a blank slate and he thinks our consciences are the result of our experiences. How can he argue for this, right? This is how he does it. Why is it difficult to prove? All right, because People have, it's so emotional, preponderance of feelings. It drives people instantly, it hits their emotional buttons and they stop thinking. The conflict between their, what they think and what they feel, right? It's, you know, they might, you know, they're not thinking. And if they were thinking, then they'd realize their feelings are wrong, right? the influence of social institutions, habit and custom and prejudice, right? The inability or unwillingness of people to examine their habits and their socialization. Okay, the burden of proof, right? The people who should be arguing, um, it, the burden is on those who argue for women's equality, but in other cases, the assumption is that people are free and equal. And the burden of proof is on people who argue for limits, right? How come we have to prove this? When it's men arguing, they assume they're free and equal and they're criticizing each other for being richer, more powerful, right? So how come with women, 
we have to prove that they're equal, not fair. Okay. It's difficult to prove a negative. It's difficult to, to say everything we're doing is wrong, right? It requires looking ahead. And of course, a lot of people are just afraid of change. And they then they envision some world where, I don't know, women are going to be castrating men or something. What do they got in mind, right? What are they so afraid of? Then there's romanticism, uh, instinct. It's just natural. This, uh, you know, it's mystical, all right? And this naturalism and religion is always a sanctioning ordained inequality is ordained by God. There's no empirical evidence. And, and we don't have any knowledge at his time, eight, uh, 19th century, right? 1850s, no knowledge of the psyche, no psychological research. Okay, why is it important for somebody to speak out? Well, you know how you do scientific experiments, right? You have your control group, and then you have another group that has a, a variable. And so this changes and it's and you're trying to see if this one change makes this group different than this group, then that would be the cause. If you change that and um, it's no different, you gotta find a different cause. But anyway, male domination was never uh, initiated, right? You didn't try, well, let's try female domination. Let's try male domination. Let's try perfect equality, right? It was never, the any alternative was never tried. It was just might make, makes right, right? The origin of it was just, I have the power to do it and I'm gonna do it. Um, and then they gave pseudo reasons, right? Just to justify their lust for power. Um, it was started and perpetuated without any concern for justice or truth. So somebody has to speak out, right? Okay, here's the one I think Isabel talking about. And this is, these are these guys living with John Stuart Mill. He says, but women accept male domination. My wife doesn't complain. You know, she likes being the head of the household, blah, blah, blah. All right. Well, first of all, some women don't accept it, right? And John Stuart Mill lived during the time when women were, women's suffrage, women were um, working for the right to vote. They had a nonviolent, um, demonstrations, they, I don't know if you know, they were put in prison and they would have uh, hunger strikes and they were force fed and all sorts of stuff. Um, also that no oppressed class begins by asking for complete change. They begin by asking for the oppressor to be less harsh. So they can compare their husbands, you know, my husband beats me. My husband doesn't beat me, what do you do? You know, so they have these little, they realize, gee, you don't have to live with a husband that beats you, you know? And so they start to get the sense that, wait a sec, this is not a one size fits all, okay? And, and so he says this, and again, he's generalizing, he's using scientific method. Those who are under any power that started a long time ago, they never begin by complaining about the power, but only the way it's exercised. So they can understand that men, some husbands treat their wives differently. And so they're gonna begin with that. Women are afraid to complain. That's what Isabel said, right? They have to live with their husbands, right? Yeah, she's gonna go complain and then she has to go have sex with the guy. Yeah, that's gonna go over real well, right? Oh my God, right? Even a slave, a male slave doesn't have to do that. Um, in no other case is the person who's been proved to uh, judiciously to have suffered is, is that person who complains about having suffered, they're replaced, they're put right back under the power of the person who inflicted it, right? So of course, women aren't going to complain. 
Um, all the causes, social, natural, combine to make it unlikely that women should collectively rebel against the power of men. Men don't want a forced slave. They want to love and be loved by their wives, right? So people want their marriages to work. And so they don't question it, make grief for each other, right? All the institutions try to enslave women's minds, the whole force of education. So again, education is powerful. Um, the natural attraction between the sexes, women's economic, emotional, and social dependence on men prevents women from developing their characters in any natural way. All right, so keep writing down the arguments that are compelling to you Right, as many, you know, I like that one. I don't like that one or keep writing down the ones you like. Um, okay, so I'll stop there for a minute. Let me see how many, oh, this is six pages. I guess I, I'll go on a little bit more. History teaches people have always held false beliefs that eventually get recognized, right? Race, class, sex, gender, all this stuff. Someone always has to be the messenger. And these people are usually hated because they're, they're not well integrated into society, right? They're maladapted. Um, in ancient societies, people's identities were their social roles. In modern society, people are individuals, free and equal. Um, and we've been through that, right? Utilitarianism, Kant, all those all those um, views that we study. Um, even with Augustine and Aquinas, I emphasized that anybody can reason this way. Um, so ever since a certain point in history, and he does think, if you remember, he thinks history is going to fundamentally change or it is fundamentally changing because of the blank slate. We can actually condition people out of these sins so we can condition people out of sexism. We just have to, you know, give an argument for it. Um, let's see, in economics, people are allowed to be individuals, buy and sell what they like, free choice and competition. So why not give women freedom, right? And enable them to compete with men and the, the if they really are naturally inferior, they won't compete, right? So it's always unjust to hinder individual freedom. Um, okay, so let's go that far and stop and pick your favorite. I'll give you time to write down everything you want to write down for your post. And then I'll have each one of you bring up one favorite and um, I think I'll do this two more times and that'll be about it for the class. And then I'll explain the next class. So let me know when you're done. I just wish everyone could have their video on because I do think we could have a lively discussion even online if we could see each other, but you know, it's one of those things where AUW students are in a worse place than other universities and we can feel sorry for ourselves or we can just say, okay, we just have to try harder. Um, so, I mean, as a teacher, I think I've tried harder. 
I mean, I've tried to show that I'm, that I'm trying. Um, so that, because I want you all to just try, try harder, and then you can be more resilient. When you hear other people feeling sorry for themselves, you can say, let me tell you about what we had to do under COVID, you know, and then they'll shut up. <laughs> Probably be a privileged white guy, you know, whining about something. <laughs> Okay, we got two done. And 10 to go. Okay. No, I just have two done. Are, are the rest of you still there? Could someone just tell me? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So when I say that I'm done, it means that, you know, I, I pointed out an outline and what to talk in my paper, but then it's not like completely done. <laughs> right. No, that's okay. Uh, yeah. um, all right. So I'm going to, everybody, I'll just give you a few seconds, actually. Which argument do you like best? And we can't take too much time. I would love to, and I think in the future we will, because we won't have to do all that background stuff. So, okay, Maywish, which argument did you like the best? I really like the argument of naturalism where uh, it says that, uh, is it really natural that we are not as equal as men or it's the culture that's okay. forcing it? Good, to. very good, the relation between nature and culture. Okay, Isabel, what you got? Oh, Isabel, we can't hear you. No. Okay. So I'm going to move on, but if you figure it out, that's great. Rita, what you got? Okay, Masoma. Uh, yes, Professor. Like, I, I really liked his argument about burden of proof. So if uh, he okay. was saying that if we uh, if women are, you know, supposed to prove that they are equal than men, then why should not male prove their, you know, superiority to the woman? So, you know, we never ask this, right? So we are always trying to prove that we are equal, we are equal, but no one is asking that why we should believe this kind of, you know, Irrational idea. They should also prove if they they can prove. So so I like this right. one. And then I also liked uh, his uh, last point about the uh, economic interdependency. That how it prevent women, you know, from being treated equally. And it's really true in my society, especially. I'm not talking about the uh, emotional and social interdependency, but uh, only about economic interdependency. That women, you know, actually they they do they do not they are not financially interdependent uh, dependent. But then this is why you know they are treating differently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they don't. Have it's a big deal, especially since children are so dependent for so long. It's hard for women to be in the workforce, you know, full time and all. Yes. Really, that juggling act has never been solved. So, and then, Professor, you know, the reason is that we didn't realize that, you know, because women do not have income in their household chores that they are doing. I think they are doing more than men. Uh, that's doing, right. I mean, they, <laughs> if, if, you they, if that, they had, yeah. you know, wages. If they had wages, I'm sure that their wages would be more than, you know, I mean, they don't have any uh, off day. They are working on the Friday and Saturday, all of the day. But then no one is questioning this social yeah. norms. Yeah. yeah. Aisha, what you got? Uh, yes, Professor. So I actually liked the history and custom. There are CNB points, I mean, ancient societies and modern, modern societies. So the difference between these, um, they have showed, but I feel like in my society, um, to some extent, it's in between ancient and modern. I mean, not um, totally modern societies yet. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's good. And I, all of you are caught in between that. And 
part of my class is to help you guys work that out in your own mind, um, where you stand and where you want to go. Uh, Poppy, did you have something? Okay, uh, Ritika, do you have something? Uh, yes, Professor. Uh, I like the natural naturalism the most, I think, yeah. Okay, people say it's natural. Okay, so that's, right, the relation between nature and culture, except mm -hmm. the point is that a culture is powerful, people think something's natural, but eventually the truth comes out. Okay, now go ahead. Yes, Professor, I like about the vendor to prove because uh, as for women, we have the reasons that we show our weakness, but for the men, they have, uh, they are taking over power, but there was no cause of proof much of their reason why they, they have to be a dominant like that. Yeah, okay. Domination was never shown right shown to be to be better right it was might makes right um saida where's asia okay saida's not there all right so let's go to the next couple pages there's so many arguments it's just amazing and i think all of you can understand all of them Okay, the importance of free and open discussion. Do you remember when Mill talked about a free and open society? But it has to be mature adults. <laughs> Who are these mature adults? Okay, an enlightened estimate of what would be most advantageous, right? And so somebody, experience cannot be evidence since we have no experience of a society based on equality. So, you know, if you're a, if you're into scientific method, but the facts can't be evidence, right? You can't have a, a guy saying it's a fact. I've never met a woman who's interested in politics, you know, and it's a fact, you know, every woman I know is more emotional than every man I know. These are just facts, right? And so, so it is amazing for somebody who wants to use scientific method to say, yeah, but you can't, but you have to ignore every fact, <laughs> right? I mean, this take, that's why it's really genius the way he does this. Every improvement has been accompanied by greater equality for women. He can argue that based on fact, right? No one knows the nature of the sexes based on current experience because the nature of women is the artificial result of forcing them to live one way and preventing them from living any other way. Very interesting, right? That it can use facts to say, and you have to ignore all the facts, right? Okay, women's characters are too distorted by their forced dependence on their husbands. We are ignorant about how human character is formed in general. We need a science of the laws of the influence of circumstance on character. The claim that women have no interest in politics, is that natural or cultural? Okay, so that's the importance of free and open discussion. Second one, very few men know the characters, even of their own wives and daughters. They don't recognize the effect of social conditioning and economic dependence, even on their what, right, their wife. They don't know the extent to which she's panders to him, not because she necessarily thinks he's so wonderful, but you know, she just has to survive and she doesn't want to get into fights and all that. Um, they don't recognize that their views of women in general are just a description of their own wives or daughters. I don't know about you, but when the students at Lyon, when they have a breakup, right? They'll say, oh, men are all such blah, right? <laughs> or women are, uh, you know, and it's actually just, they're just met at their, you know, the person who just broke up with them. Um, 
uh, when they really love their wives and their love, their wives don't let them know about their frustrations. Um, and women who have, who do think they don't expose that size of themselves because it's not acceptable. Very few people know themselves or anyone else very well, right? Um, but they, you know, you can only gain knowledge if you have a relationship based on equality where people actually are honest. It's almost impossible for men to gain any knowledge of women. Women writers don't even say what they really think because they'll be censored. Some women write what they feel, but what they feel is a product of socialization. All right, so there's all that, that social conditioning, people do not even know the characters of the people in their families. Here's the next one. I like this one, I sort of favor this one. If women are by nature intended to be wives and mothers, no one needs to force them to live that way, right? Just give them all these rights and they won't take it. No problem. By forcing them to be wives and mothers, making it the only way they can survive, that implies it's not natural, right? Perhaps the truth is women must reproduce if given any other choice, they won't. So they must be forced, right? Okay, same with slavery, right? Was slavery by nature or was it, we need somebody to do this horrible work? So, okay. All right, by forcing women to marry, men don't have to be responsible husbands. By giving women other options, they have to treat their wives responsibly. So they, so the women want to live in a married state. If you really want to oppress women, don't even teach them to read, right? But men really want someone they can talk to, right? They don't want a slave. All right, so that's that. Second point, the policies are contradictory. They really are by nature intended Give them all these opportunities and they won't take it. No problem. What about marriage? Um, okay, I'll go through this. Given that it's women's only option, it should be pleasant for them, right? Really. And in ancient societies, girls were sold and it's not pleasant. This is the 18th, 19th century Men is a lord over his wife. If she kills him, it's treason and she's burned to death. This is the way the legal system worked. I don't know in your countries how it is. Women had no property rights. When a woman inherits property, her husband gets it. Okay, given that it's the only option, it should be pleasant. It's horrible. It's a dictatorship. Whatever is hers is his, not the other way around. Men can force women sexually, no legal limits. Children are the property of men. If women leave, they can't take anything. The husband can force her to return. The laws must be made to account for bad men. Women cannot get a divorce instantly if they're raped. They can't tell anyone what's happening because if their husbands will just abuse them more. So. Mill is saying political despotism is rejected, right? We have democracy, but personal despotism is allowed. Now, is that true in your societies? Like supposedly, you know, people can vote, but men in at home, they can treat their wives in an extremely undemocratic and anti-democratic way, right? When people are given absolute power, they'll abuse it. So women, in order to fight back, they can be passive aggressive, <laughs> right? Uh, they can be like shrews. They can, you know, become bitches. That's a stereotype, right? But they're just fighting back. At best, they'll develop real affection for each other. They'll have common interests. Uh, in happy marriages, women may influence their husbands too much. Um, they may be too ambitious for their husbands. They may make their husbands do things they're not qualified to do. 
Um, men who love their wives can be made worse by them because the women are ambitious for their husbands. And so their husbands become more um, uh, pushy, more power hungry, because they want to satisfy their wife. Um, the division of duties should be based on choice, not force or habit. Since men marry women who are younger, younger and less educated and experienced, obviously they'll be given the duties, the women will be given the duties, but that's not equality. Women are idealized because they're so self-sacrificing, right? Oh, she's such an angel. <laughs> that's not a compliment. You know, she's so wonderful. We don't want her in that dirty world of money and power. Like, oh, I must protect her. She's too good for that. Yeah, really. <laughs> if the sexes were equal, women would be less self-abnegating and men would be less egotistical. Um, equality before the law is necessary before life at home will lead to moral cultivation. Currently, the spouses are not usually friends, and the marriage is really a corrupt relationship, right? Marriage as an institution is corrupted by inequality. Okay, so I'll stop there. Three main topics of response. The importance of free and open discussion. People don't really even know the characters of men and women because of all this socialization and the policies are con contradictory. The institution is corrupt. It's a despotic institution, right? Okay, I'll give you some time to write that, write about that. So I'll tell you a funny story while you're writing. Um, Martha Nussbaum was working with some self-help, women's self-help organizations in India. And they would get in groups and sort of talk about trying to make their husbands accountable because now they could be in the self-help and they could actually make money. <laughs> you know, so they aren't quite as dependent. And this one woman said, okay, I made my husband take a bath and brush his teeth. <laughs> and like, that was a big deal. I don't want this stinky guy all over me. And so <laughs> that was like her first step to talking back to her husband. I was like, you got to start somewhere. Oh, okay, so we are running out of time. So I do want you to, family life would be better if it were equal. Uh, the laws and social change, why is it hard to change laws? Philosophy and religion, 
Um, oh, you, the, the last page, you can just ignore that. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, so you can go through that and write your favorites. Um, I really think, you know, next time I will let you out a half an hour early. You can write it all up and have it all done. This time, you'll, if you don't have a class right after this, just get it done while it's fresh in your mind. Um, and I hope, you know, I hope I've got people back on board and people are, can feel empowered, like I can get this done. She's just telling me, do this, do that, do that, get it over with. Um, but I still will have office hours. It's just not for a few days now. Um, and if there's any other questions, um, uh, I'll stay here. But it is time to let you go. I know some of you have class, so. Um, OK. Professor, All right. Do you have yeah. your office hours? This what? Week? When will you have your office hours? Oh, well, I have it the same time as the class. So uh, from Thursday to except that, except that I have now, this is the four days in a row. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday mornings, Bangladesh time I teach. So mm -hmm. it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday mornings. Okay. Okay, can you repeat the uh, uh, office hour days? Okay, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Okay, and then I'll stay after, and I know you have to go, some of you. So, yeah. Well, thank you, uh, Isabel and Maywish. You know, can you can you imagine how much nicer the class would be if faces? I but know, I understand. We're gonna feel sorry for ourselves. We're gonna be tough, right? <laughs> Uh, thank you, Professor. Bye. Bye-bye. Professor, bye. good night. Bye-bye. Goodbye, Professor. Bye-bye, Aisha. Bye, Professor. Have a good day. Bye-bye, Rita. Bye-bye, Ms. Selma. Bye, Professor. We got very corrupted today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. I'm really... Yeah, she... Yeah. <laughs> steak yeah drink the hemlock burn to the steak pour hot lead down her throat whatever <laughs> yes professor thank you so much professor sure saida are you there haven't heard much oh okay i'm gonna stop the recording here